Okay, so for my free choice lecture, I chose to do bipolar disorder. So some basics for bipolar disorder is it's classified as a psychiatric disorder, more specifically a mood disorder. Um, there is defined as extremes in mood or mood instability that affect thinking, feeling, and motivational functioning for the individual. It's usually di diagnosed before the age of 30, but it is a lifelong condition. Um, therefore, it's more common in young adults and adolescents. Um, because of the extremes in mood, there's a higher risk of suicide or violent actions within these individuals. Um, often, other disabilities are associated with bipolar disorder, which include anxiety, panic disorders, and OCD. Um, there's been links with genes and heredity as maybe a source of the cause for bipolar disorder. Therefore, if the individual has parents or relatives that have bipolar disorder, it's more likely that they will have it too. And then it's also classified as having two different types of episodes. So there's mania and then there's also depression. So mania is kind of like the highs for the individuals. Um, so behaviors are hyperactive, euphoric, or overly enthusiastic. This leads to individuals getting little sleep um, and they usually don't have motivation to eat. Um, speech can be rapid or loud. Uh, can be accompanied by a psychosis, delusions, or hallucinations. So remember back when we learned about schizophrenia, psychosis is the loss of contact with the sense of reality. So then delusions and hallucinations kind of fall underneath that. So delusions are beliefs are not grounded in reality and hallucinations involve the different senses that contribute to the individual doing something that they shouldn't or sense something that is not there. Um, when an individual is undergoing a mania episode, range and violent actions are usually common, um, which can lead to poor judgment. Um, this can include excess spending, so going on spending binges, or inappropriate sexual activity. The depression episode is a little different. This is the low part for the individual. So individuals tend to feel sad, including feelings of despair and hopelessness. Um, and because of these feelings, it, they have a high risk of self-harm and suicide. Uh, there's difficulty with problem solving, concentration, and decision making, which is important as a CTR to understand, especially when um, implementing activities during this time uh, individuals undergoing. Ma a major portion of the manifestations are um, depression. So an individual for the majority is in the depression um, episode. Anxiety, irritability, and worry are common within them, and then there's also the loss of energy for activities in life, so that's another um, important thing to remember as a CTRS. So there's different types of classifications for bipolar disorder. There's bipolar disorder 1, which is the most common form, and at least this is classified as at least one manic episode lasting more than a week, but there can also be mixed episodes between the depression episode and the manic episode. And then bipolar disorder two is at least one major depressive episode and hypomania. And hypomania is elevated or irritable mood over time. And it's a little bit more mild um, symptoms of mania. And um, this cycle causes um, less dysfunction because the um, symptoms aren't as severe. And then cyclomania is both hypomanic and depressive episodes lasting more than two years. And um, this one, the symptoms are a lot um, more mild, so it doesn't cause less um, distress in an individual's life. Management for bipolar disorder, um, a huge thing that is um, implemented for these individuals is medications because it's essential for controlling the manifestation. Um, it's thought to be kind of like a mood stabilizer, so um, it's crucial that individuals take their medication and it's common for them to stop taking it when they feel fine or when they their mood stabilizes, which will then lead to more occurrences of episodes. So it's important to encourage the individual to take their medications constantly. And let's say an individual switches medications or goes back on a medication, it usually takes two to three weeks for the medication to stabilize the mood. So that's important to remember also. Um, there's also psychosocial interventions that are used with the medications, so um, these would encourage uh, individuals to learn to manage the disorder, healthy thinking and coping. Um, it's also been linked to helping with the stabilization. 
group therapies is a big one too to get that support. And then they people studies have found that physical exercise can also help in linking to stabilization. So over here, there's some goals of the psychosocial treatment by Medscape. Um, so family focus, so that building that interpersonal relationships, um, and then cognitive behavioral therapy, so monitoring the moods um, and stabilizing the individual. So some functional in implications for individuals with bipolar disorder is um, there's a lot of stigmas associated with bipolar disorder, in including like in people viewing them as being sick or helpless and that they have really unpredictable moods all the time. Um, so really associating and trying to break those stigmas. And then a huge thing for individuals with bipolar disorder is the unstable relationships that they have, um, especially because the different types of moods they have can really um, affect their interpersonal relationships. So building those up is important. Uh, fatigue, hormonal, and seasonal changes are really important to monitor because that can be triggers for the episodes to occur. Encouraging the individual to do get, take their meds, get good sleep, have a good diet, and exercise regularly is important to help stabilize the individual. Um, instilling control and positivity is crucial um, to keep the manifestations um, at a minimum. And then avoiding alcohol and drugs is important to avoid reoccurrences as well. Um, so some treatments for them is kind of just another um, kind of going off of all the things I've already said. So support groups is a crucial for the, developing those coping skills and building those interpersonal relationships. Um, educational resource, resources for leisure in their spare time and also um, on just the disorder itself to help them manage their own life. Medications is huge. Like I said before, building interpersonal relationships through the support groups and through family building. Um, helping the individual gain independence, especially um, getting them on the, their mood stabilized so they can achieve that independence and know um, by educating them how to handle their own disorder independently. Um, Self-esteem and confidence building is huge, especially when individuals undergo um, the depressive episode um, often because that can really bring down um, their self-esteem and confidence. Exercise classes and physical activity, like I said, is very is been found to um, help stabilize the mood of the individual. Financial assistance is huge, especially if they do like the spending binges during the manic episodes, and then coping with stress. So some different resources I found were um, this one is offers lots of different education and events that are going on. Um, peer support groups, uh, wellness options, as well as some resources and um, publications for clinicians. So that would be something like as a CTRS we could go to to find resources. The second website I found just kind of gives a little bit more um, overview for us to like learn a little bit more about it, like symptoms, signs, causes, diagnosis, kind of the whole thing. But it also goes on and gives treatment support and then discussion. And the last one I found was pretty cool. Um, it's like an online chat room, kind of almost like a blog for individuals who have bipolar disorder for um, so they can post lots of different things like um, I have no time for stigma or discrimination. It's a place for them to vent and then people what they wish they understood. So I think this would be really important as a CTRS to know this because we can really understand what they're going through and kind of see it from their eyes. So I thought those were really cool websites um, to help with it. And then um, last is just my references. So I use the Falbo book and then the book that's used for the 326 class. All right, thank you.